there guitar heroes, Eric Andres, your guitar sage here. And today I'm gonna to discuss with you what I believe are the top five things that every intermediate guitar player should know, okay? Now, this is assuming that you know how to play some basic chords, you know how to play some basic melodies, maybe some scales, you're playing songs, you're feeling good, entertaining your friends, you're the life of the party, uh, playing around the campfire the whole nine yards. But you want to bring it up to the next level. You want to know, well, what is that? What is the difference between a beginner and an intermediate? Now, obviously, there's not just magically five things, all right? There's several things, but these are the top five things that I think that every guitar player uh, should go from beginner to intermediate. And I've been teaching for like 30-something years, literally thousands of one-on-one -on -one students and, and millions of folks on the web. So. Um, written books and the whole nine and the whole nine yards so if you're new to me um, there are my credentials i do stuff with guitar there you go there's my phd in guitar um, and so obviously my opinion may mean nothing to you and that's okay uh, if it means something to you then listen up and i'm going to tell you these five things now i'm going to go over them quick i'm going to go over the basics with you but obviously since we got five things which would be a very long video each one of these things uh, if i was sitting down with a guitar player i may take an hour and i'm reading off this list here because i just put this together um, so you'll see me glancing down um, so I'm going to go over these things with you, but I'm also going to point you to more detail, both here on YouTube, and then I have some websites, some free stuff, some books and stuff, if you need, if you want to get further into this subject, okay? And this is in no particular order, okay? So the first thing is bar chords, okay? If you know what bar chords are, obviously, you, um, you then you're good here. In fact, I'll tell you what, I'm going to go right down the list, and if there's something here that you're not familiar with, then um, then great. You know, you you'll, you could stick around if you know all these things. Then then you're on your way. Okay. So the five things are bar chords, the caged system, the pentatonic scale, the Nashville number system. We'll also we'll call it the number system, and identifying the tonic of a song like that, okay? So if you're good at that and you're a master at all those, you can turn off this video and go watch some cats jumping around or watch somebody pranking somebody. Uh, otherwise, uh, if you want to stick around, then we're going to get into this more. All right, so bar chords is the first thing. Um, in essence, a bar chord is anything that we can play in the open position, but then we play it further up the neck. So any chord that we do in the open position can become a chord up the neck rendering any open chord 12 times as powerful because we can move it up in any key. Now, it doesn't necessarily mean that we're able to play it very well. Like, for instance, a G chord moved up the neck is going to look, sound, and feel like this. And I can tell you that this does not feel very nice because this is a crazy stretch and it just doesn't no one's going to really play that. But essentially, technically, we can take any chord that we do in the open position and play it further up the neck. We can also take any lick that we play. Anything we do in the open position, we can do further up the neck as well, okay? So we know that. Now, if you want more information about bar chords, I'm going to give you two places. The, 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 the better place Unstoppable Guitar System, the link is below. It's a dollar to get into that system, but you'll be privy to it for two weeks. It's amazing, it's my top stuff, so that's one place you can go to. In fact, for all this stuff that I'm gonna be talking about, Unstoppable link, I'll just mention it. Here on YouTube, if you wanna stay within the YouTube realm and you wanna see pranksters and, and cat cats chasing things and, and booby girls and every, all the rest, and you can stay here on YouTube, um, okay? Um, so if you want to go, if you want to do that, um, type in your guitar sage bar chords, and you'll see a guy that looks a lot like me with a Fu Manchu teaching you th over 300 bar chords within just a few minutes. Okay, it's a great system to know. Okay, so bar chords. That's number one. The cage system, which is also on YouTube here that I've that I've taught that you can type in your guitar sage caged and I'll show you how to, to do that, okay? How to learn about that, but I'm gonna show you basically how to do it here. Again, unstoppable as well, link below. Okay, so the idea of the cage system is we're using bar chords, okay? But we're using them, we're using the bar chords based off of our five open major chords, C, A, G, E, and D. 
See how they spell the word caged? Of course you do. I don't need to point that out to you. You're smart. So we got C, A, G, E, and D. And so the way the cage system, the thought of the cage system uh, goes is that we can play any one of these chords up the neck. We've mentioned that already in bar chords. But they proceed in that order, C, A, G, E, D, going up the neck. For instance, if we wanted to play a C chord, five different ways up the neck, we can do it like this. Here's a C chord in with the C formation. So this sounds like a C chord because it is, and we're using the C formation. So for instance, if I wanted to take that C formation and I wanted to move it up the neck, I could put my first finger here and move it up the neck like that. So this is what I would call a C formation, even though it's not a C chord, it's changing every single time I play it, right? So uh, for similarly, if I take an E chord and I do this, I'm not playing an E chord every time, I'm playing an E formation. Okay, so the idea is that we're playing C, A, G, E, D formations, but all on one particular chord. So let's think about this for a second. If I have to take a C chord, here's our C chord, We've got a bass note of a C, and that's a C formation. Here's the A formation. Right? Here's a C, here's a C, here's a G formation. Here's our C again. Here's our E formation. Here's a C again. Here's our D, D formation. So we have these chords. So we have five different formations, all C chords, okay? So if that does not make sense to you, then make sure you watch the video here or at the Unstoppable Guitar System, okay? The pentatonic scale is the next one. This is a scale that everybody needs to know. Um, here on YouTube, you can search the most powerful scale in the world or your guitar stage pentatonic, or you can click here. And um, yes, so the pentatonic scale is gonna look like this. It's usually the first scale that everybody learns or the major scale. If you want uh, to know that formation, I'll go over it with you really quick. If you want a printout version of it, get the free ebook at yourguitarsage.com. When you do that, you'll be privy basically to these books as well. I'll give them to you. I give them away several times a year uh, on Amazon. They're my Amazon books and I give them away several times a year, not just to select people, to everybody. Um, but I let you know through my email list. So if you sign up for that free ebook, you'll be on it, okay? All right, let's talk about it. Um, it has a, in this case here, it has a root of an A. That's your tonic, you know, your root. Uh, so we're gonna play, this is gonna be all on the fifth fret, the eighth or the seventh fret. So it's gonna go like this. In the fifth position, meaning your first finger's behind the fifth fret, you're gonna play five and eight, five, seven, five, seven, five, seven. 5-8, five, 5-8. Eight, five, eight. So it's gonna sound like this. And backwards. Okay. Now, why is the pentatonic so, so great? Well, I talk about it in detail in that video here on YouTube. Um, but why it's so great is because really you're using some tones out of the scale that are very, very powerful. Uh, meaning they really resonate with the chord progression and they sound good. They just are good, sweet notes. They sound good when you're playing them. Almost like primary colors would be, as opposed to if you were gonna draw a picture of something, you just probably you know, could only pick of three or four colors, you'd pick primary colors. You wouldn't pick pastels and fluorescence and stuff like that because it's gonna really limit what you could paint, okay? Similarly, the pentatonic scale has these choice notes that work well in any chord progression. Okay, now uh, with that being said, it's also movable and adjustable so you can move it to any key. So if you know this one form, you could play lead guitar or noodle over the top of any song in the history of songs, in any key, in any genre, with any instrument, ever, amen. Classical to rock to jazz, anything, you could play it. And you could be in that key and be hitting the right notes. Now getting super good at it takes some time. 
just like juggling, okay? Or anything like that. Okay, so pentatonic, that's number one, that's number three. Uh, the number system is basically a system of understanding the chords through numbers instead of letters. So instead of G, A minor, B minor, C, D, E, uh, e minor, um, F sharp diminished, and G, instead of thinking those, instead of thinking our one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, one, our seven diatonic notes or major scale notes, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, one, we think about the chords that way. One, two, three, four, five, six, six, seven, one. I'll do that again. One major, two minor, three minor, four major, five major, six minor, seven diminished, and one major again. Now that may be a little complicated to you and it does take some explanation, but man, if there's one thing out of this entire list that I wish every musician knew, it would be the number system. Because I promise you, if you understand this very basic concept, it'll take you maybe, a, maybe an hour or so to learn once you, I mean, to get good at, once you understand it, it will unlock music for you in a way that nothing else will. It did it for me. Once I knew how to play that way, it was everything opened up for me. So you gotta know how to do it. And I don't have a very detailed version of that here on YouTube, so you will have to go to the Unstoppable Guitar System for that. Again, link is below, it's one buck to get in. And you're in it for two weeks, all right? Okay, identifying the tonic. This is number five, identifying the tonic of a song. What we mean by tonic is we mean what is the central note that all the other notes and chords dance around. Okay, just like, uh, I'm just gonna pick a song, uh, Slow Dancing in a Burning Room by John Mayer. Okay, um, I've taught this song many times, I forgot it though, so I couldn't even play it for you. Uh, but bottom line, the song is Slow Dancing in a Burning Room. He's talking about a relationship that's going up in flames and he's using a lot of connotations, talking about flames and fire and stuff like that. Nothing's really on fire, he's talking about this relationship that's going down in flames. Uh, but bottom line, the, t the song is slow dancing in a burning room, talking about dancing and with this woman, and um, obviously the relationship's ending, so it's an, odd, it's an odd thing. But the whole song is centered around this idea of slow dancing in a burning room. That's the, the, the lyrical central idea, and all the other lyrics in the song support it, okay? That's true for 99% of the songs out there if they're, written, if they're written with some sort of meaning and they're not just complete nonsense like I Am the Walrus by the Beatles where they wrote it just to have fun and mess with people. Um, so every song has a central theme lyrically, right? Well, similarly, every song except for a very small segment of music called atonal uh, or 12-tone music, um, every song has a tonal center, meaning one note that all the other notes dance around, one chord that all the other chords dance around, okay? And identifying this one particular note or one particular chord is, is like if you're a detective, it's like finding the smoking gun. It's the thing that tells you so much information about a song. And I'd say that nine, nine times out of 10, if you take all the musicians in the world, uh, probably nine of them out of 10, are not even thinking about this. They're just playing the licks that they know, they're playing the chords that they know, but they're not even thinking about what the tonic of the song is. And the unfortunate thing is because they're not doing that, they're missing out on a load of stuff that they could be playing, a load of places they could be going, appreciating the music so much more if they understood where the tonic was. Because you understand where the tonic is, this is where the number system starts making sense, it's where um, the pentatonic scale is gonna make sense because you're, you're gonna know what key to use it in. Um, the cage system, you won't be able to use the cage system if you don't know what the tonic is. You know, if you know what one chord is, that will help with the cage system. Um, but really, everything I've talked about in here is going to be supportive of, uh, or it's going to help by knowing what the tonic is. Okay. Now, this is a much longer video than I hoped it was going to be. Uh, but you have all these other places that you can research this if one of these things um, entices you. Uh, you know where to go. I've mentioned to you several times here on Unstoppable Guitar System and yourguitarstage.com. Get that free ebook. You'll be privy to those books and a bunch of other stuff that I do, my free uh, webinars that I do where you can ask questions and talk to me one-on-one. -on -one. 
or one on many, me one, you many. Um, I'm here to help you. Please let me know. I've been doing this for a long time. I love teaching guitar. I love to help people learn. So please let me know how I can help. All right. I'm on Twitter, Facebook, all that good stuff. Please spay and neuter animals. Be kind to one another so we can change this world one person at a time, starting with ourselves. See ya.